Today I wanted to take a look at how to create a SharePoint calendar event from Power Apps. Here we have a simple leave request for out of office. Maybe you're doing PTO or training and we'll make a test event. We'll mark it as an all day event, putting in date and time. We're just going to pick the date and we'll go ahead and save that to a SharePoint list where it's tracking. The SharePoint list itself really just saves the data we were looking at on screen. We have a training event. It is marked as an all day event, yes. Now, we'd like that to land on a calendar, a SharePoint calendar, for a more visual display of who's in or out of the office. So here's the leave request itself. Here's the calendar. The leave request itself does have an approval needed. So that's gonna come through email or Teams with the approval step as part of workflow. So let's come check our workflow history and we'll see a workflow execution running. Uh, one trick, if workflow is not running after a recent change, go to edit mode and click save. Edit save has a way of waking up the workflow for change detection and then we'll see the running event instantiate even sooner. So here we see that workflow is running. We have it doing its various conversions and then it moves forward to the start and wait for approval step. The approval step should kick a notification to the current user account. And here we see our notification email coming through and we can approve or reject the item directly in the form. One of the things that I did with this as a level of customization is Markdown MD support. So the approval step in Power Automate does not allow HTML. No HTML, no HTML allowed. However, it does allow Markdown. And with Markdown, we can do a few things like bulleted list and hyperlinks and show the details of the event. You know, we're doing training on Tuesday, June 27th. Do you want to approve or reject? We'll click approve and we'll say, looks good, learn a lot. And we'll do submit. There we go. We're able to approve that particular leave request item. And going to an approved state, we'll move it through the workflow. Now you can see the status tracker here as a final approve. We do have the comments into the tracking list. And over here, we come to our calendar, we'll do a check. And it should be adding to our calendar next. So here we can see our test event landing on the calendar. Super cool. It says test event training, where we put the type of event in parentheses. And if we come into the SharePoint calendar, it does mark it as an all day event, which I think is really cool. Getting this functionality of the all day event yes is a little more detailed than you'd think. Uh, when you're creating an item on the SharePoint calendar, there's a few different steps involved. If it's a timed event or if it's an all day event. If it's a time-based event, it's actually pretty straightforward. That's the easiest one. We simply feed in start date, start time. So these timed events are the easy scenario. They simply feed the date and time that we have uh, collected from our list item as part of our input. However, if you're doing an all day event, it's a little bit different. For that, you actually need to feed in this little guy here, the F all day event true parameter. And what I'm doing is actually using the send HTTP. So this is a REST API call, right, that we're sending to SharePoint. We're giving it the name of the calendar. So this is the calendar name right here. And then we have to give it the accept and content type for JSON headers. That's fairly standard with any REST API we're doing. And we're posting only a couple of items. We are giving it four pieces of data. We're giving it a title, which is required. We're giving it dates, which are also required. And then we're giving it the lowercase f all day event with a Boolean of true. That marker, this flag, this is the flag for all day on a SharePoint list, if you're doing a SharePoint calendar. And it, it's kind of a, an interesting trick that there is this marker, this flag that needs to be turned on, the all day event, yes. And with that marker in place, the response coming back is a SharePoint list item, which contains an ID number. And at that point, we can do an update of the event 
to put in things like our description. And why am I doing this as a secondary step, right? This is a secondary st step to update the description. It's because this is a lot easier to read and support than the REST API call. Use the REST to create it. Use a standard block to update it. Putting all of this description into the REST API event may actually be harder to support and read. So it does echo back the ID number of the item created, allowing us to use a normal update beyond that. So if you want to make an all day event in SharePoint using Power Automate, I like to do it as two steps. The first step is a REST API call with this flag that gives it the all day event true. And then the second step is to update and populate your standard details. In the end, we end up with the calendar event. We have all of our description details. It's marking on the calendar correctly with the one day. It's marking correctly as an all day event if you connect to Outlook. And all day events from Power Automate can be done. They simply need this one little flag, the flag for all day event true. Thanks for watching.